It would be only partly true to present our next speaker as master's student here at the School of Electrical Engineering because he is also an active open hardware developer and contributor and he will present today his own student experiences from getting his first Arduino board to building advanced projects that he also brought with him today and I'm certain that you will be inspired by uh, Milos Rashic's projects and enthusiasm that he has for open hardware in general. So, Milos, please. They need some time to set up the scene for you because he brought a lot of um, hardware projects. And please do not worry, drone is not going to fly. It's not safe. We know that. Uh, your presentation. Hi, thanks for coming. My name is Milos Rašić and today I'll be talking about Arduino. So, uh, what's an Arduino? Let's start with that. Arduino is an open source hardware and uh, hardware platform, most actually hardware and software, and they've made it easy to actually communicate, to put it into simple words, your code with the real world. Uh, that's what, uh, what I wanted to do for a while when I, when I started actually coding, how do I actually translate that into the real world, and the Arduino was the gateway to that. Uh, so what's actually an Arduino? So when you Google Arduino, you're probably going to see something like this. This is an Arduino Uno. That's a development board made by Arduino. And it's a development board for a microcontroller that you can see here. Uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes. So uh, here you can see some other different kinds of Arduinos from Arduino Uno, Maker Line, Nano Line, with, which come with different peripherals, communication protocols, and things like that. The great thing about Arduino is that it's open source hardware. And what that enabled is a great community of both individuals who develop their own projects, as well as companies who developed actually products for Arduino itself. So for example, there's a whole ecosystem of shields, which are expansion boards for Arduino that just click into place on top of the Arduino and work out of the box with libraries and things like that. But also simpler things like all kinds of sensors, displays, motor drivers, you can name it. There's probably somebody who already made an open source design. And it's that open source uh, thing that makes Arduino so powerful and so popular because let's be honest, if you're having a problem while doing your own project, there's a pretty good chance that somebody already had it and figured the solution. So I'll start with my journey uh, of Arduino and, and generally talk about Arduino and open hardware from a student's perspective. Uh, my first Arduino, I got it back in 2015 as a part of an Arduino starter kit. As I've said before, my main goal was to actually connect the code I was then writing only in C++ to the real world. So lighting the first LED on was a mile high achievement for me. I was thrilled when that actually happened. And I just continued from there following all of the projects that you can find in the starter kit. So uh, also I, I was not that much into electronics back then. I was more into physics and natural sciences. So my idea when I actually started working on my own projects was for experimental physics. I was a part of a, a Serbia's team in, in uh, an IYPT, International Young Physics Tournament. So for an experiment where other teams used multi-thousand dollar cameras, high-speed cameras to actually get any kind of usable data, I made an Arduino setup which was essentially some laser gates, but the code was written in half an hour, as simple as looking at uh, the times the buttons were pressed. Here you can see that setup. You can see the laser gates here, and as those two ladders would fall through the laser gates, the Arduino would record all of the times, 
and I could actually uh, differentiate f uh, between parameters and actually make a pretty good case study and prove the hypothesis as well, which rarely any team did for uh, this problem. So this was one of my first Arduino project back in high school. And while it gave, uh, gave really good results, it's as simple as detecting a push of a button and just detecting when it was actually pushed. I'll now go through some other more advanced projects that I've done. Some of them you can see present here. I'll start with the drone. This is the codename SRD71 uh, or the Science and Research Drone 71. It's completely based on Arduino, on three Arduinos actually. One is for the RC transmitter, one is for the RC receiver, and one is the flight controller on the Arduino. So nothing else. And again, the open source part of it, besides Arduino, it uses open source firmware for the flight controller. That uh, open source concept enabled me to actually make the drone and not have to develop the whole flight computer firmware from the ground up, run, uh, writing uh, for PID control loops for all of the motors and for the general IMU and things like that. So it made the whole process much faster. Uh, I'll just show you some videos of the actual drone working now. And yeah, you can So of course, I use high, uh, high, some advanced methods of uh, not letting the drone fly, drone fly away by tying it to a brick because it's two kilos and I really didn't want to hurt anybody, especially at this stage of development. But during the fight, it was actually pretty good. Now, of course, I would lie if I told you that it was a complete, a completely smooth sailing. So the testing mostly went like this. And sometimes like this, which is similar. And that's another thing about hardware development that I think people usually don't talk about is the many fails that can be as simple as things that were like here that it was a faulty motor. I couldn't detect it was a faulty motor during a week period, but I went on and on, tried the different things until I figured out it was that it was the issue. So here's the picture of the drone before its legs got broken up a bit, but it can still fly, just not here, of course, because don't have a break to tie it to. The next project I will be talking about is this thing right here. This is my bachelor thesis, actually. This is a all completely open source drone. It's the second one I made, that's why it beat uh, through. It also uses an Arduino. It uses an Arduino as a low-level hardware controller. It uses an Arduino Mega 2560, and it controls all of the motors. The four motors in the wheels, four steering motors, suspension motor, as well as the two motors in the head. Because it, it's a more complex uh, project, it couldn't just stay on Arduino. So it also runs a, uh, uses a Raspberry Pi as, as a computer running robot operating system. Uh, I wanted really to test it out here, but during hardware development uh, for other projects, I had to steal motors and electronics from it, so it's not really in a drivable state at the moment. Here's the 3D model of the robot. The whole idea was to make it as easy as possible to build, to make a robotics platform that people can experiment on. So as you can see, it's made from literally plastic boxes, electronic boxes, enclosures, aluminum profiles standard in generally any engineering setup now. Even plastic pipes that are used for water because they're strong enough and they, they're good enough as well and cheap. And also custom made for the printed parts it's, since a 3D printer can now be bought for less than $200. I have a couple of videos for the rover as well. Unfortunately I don't have many videos of the rover so this is some, there's some short videos of the Rover steering its wheels. Because of the four wheel steering, it can move side to side. It can also rotate into place and things like that. And this is just a simple driving test. Uh, the thing is, for the rover to work, there's so many different aspects that need to work in harmony for it to be able to move at all. 
for mechanics, electronics, software. So these were just some simple tests uh, actually playing with the role. Continue on. This is the newest project I'm working on that's not in uh, the published papers. This is an inexpensive 3D printed robot arm. One thing I've noticed is, while the robot arm doesn't use itself too many expensive components, it uses just a few motors and nothing else. All of the kits for robot arms, especially for the ones with 5 degrees of freedom, are 250 euros or more. So my idea with this project, and I'm going to continue developing it, is to make an Arduino arm, Arduino based arm that's op completely open source for a fraction of the price. All you need to do use is a 3D printer, which you can find it in makerspaces libraries if you don't already have one, but they're becoming more and more common. The idea with this robot arm is that uh, each joint besides the servo motor also has a potentiometer, so it has full, uh, full position feedback, so you can actually teach it to, for example, write something on a piece of paper, and then the robot arm can repeat that a thousand times, or if it doesn't break. Uh, I was really dedicated to the low-cost solution, so even the, be uh, the bearing at the bottom of the robot is completely custom. You can find bearings in shops, but finding a specialty bearing can be rather expensive, especially for a project like this. So this is, for example, a completely, uh, com my, com completely my design for a bearing, and it uses glass marbles, which are a kid's toy. But when put together with some 3D printing, they actually make a pretty good bearing that, for something like this, works great. So what are the benefits, generally, for, from my perspective, open source hardware? For example, the speed of which I can actually get from an idea to a prototype, because I don't have to do everything from zero. In the drone example, I didn't have to write that flight computer firmware. I, would ju I just used open source MultiV firmware, flashed it to an Arduino, and could start testing within a few days if the drone can fly or not. No knowing well, very well that thousands of people before me have tested and modified that code so that it, if it works for them, there isn't, isn't a reason that it sh shouldn't work for me. Now, if I wrote it from the zero, what can be a problem in a com more complex project like that? Now, that's an issue. Uh, also, as mentioned before, somebody already had that problem. For 99.9% .9 of the problems that I found uh, during my, uh, during the developing, the hardware development uh, and software development, when it comes to embedded products like this, uh, you can always, just with a bit more searching, you can always find the cause. You can always find that somebody had the same problem as you and find a way to fix it or a workaround or anything like that. And also, yeah, that, all of that enables you to actually move forward to more complex projects. You don't have to stay at a low level of a project because just using a simple sensor without a library, it's not impossible. It can be done. It has been done, but going through the whole data sheet, reading the, for example, I squared C, uh, paragraphs on how to communicate to the whole protocol, it can be a pretty daunting task and it's much easier to just do a few function calls in a library to get starting fast, get some results, and then if you need better performance, you can always write your own library. So I would also like to cover in the end some resources that helped me along the way where I actually found all of the tutorials, project ideas, First of all, for Arduino, of course, would be the Arduino website. It's full of great projects as well as uh, uh, their tutorials. And also, there's a whole forum where people cover Arduino-specific problems and troubleshooting. And the free communities are also post to and uh, usually check uh, for help are Element 14 community, Instructables, and Hackster. It's a place where people can share their projects comment about their projects, and uh, most of the people who actually post their projects are really passionate about them, so if you ask them any question about the project, they'll be more than happy to lend you a hand or to give you a tip, or even correct their project so it can work for you. Uh, another thing also, full disclosure, because I do film from them from time to time, is the Element 14 Presents YouTube channel, uh, where the, there's a lot of uh, open source projects posted there. Every project that they post weekly is completely open source, so all of the CAD files, code, everything is 
uh, available to the public, to everyone who views for free. And that's where I found my current space for sharing all of the projects besides the free above communities. So that would be all for my presentation. If you uh, have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Team, right? Okay. Uh, for example, uh, for the drone, yeah. uh, you said you use some things uh, from that are like open source. Uh, what did you do? What did you modify? And what did you have to modify? For example, like PD controllers or uh, I used multi V firmware for the drone as the flight computer. I modified. I mean, I did some basic PID tuning. Besides that, the, I used the protocol they already had to communicate with the receiver, but I programmed the receiver myself using NRF24 modules and Arduinos. Uh, one more question. Uh, why did you use uh, like uh, free Arduinos for the drone uh, instead of one, uh, one a bit more powerful uh, board like maybe ESP? Uh, only because of the size. And because oh. they were, at that time, when I was making the drone, the Arduino Nano was like $2 or something like that. He had them laying around. First board I grabbed. And I wanted to make it a modular system when it comes to the receiver, transmitter, and the controller itself, so I can change around between different versions easily. OK, thanks. Thank you. We have enough time for more questions. I think here we had one. Thank you for a very interesting presentation, Milos. I have a question. So can you briefly comment on uh, differences, like advantages and disadvantages of Arduino comparing to some other development boards well, like STM? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, the thing about Arduino is they're mostly hobby-based. That doesn't mean that they can be used in industrial projects, but for the most part, the whole Arduino environment is aimed towards hobbyists. For more serious projects, of course, generally in the industry, people tend to use things like ESP32s or STM32s, but that doesn't mean that Arduinos can't be used in industry. Uh, as the professor said, the, there's a whole EV charger section that's based on Arduino. I know also some professional film gear that costs thousands of euros, euros also based completely on Arduino. And some of my own projects have been working nonstop by uh, like room automation for the last five years on an Arduino and really never had any hiccups. So while they are aimed for hobbyists, the microcontrollers they have on themselves are again the, on the same standard as STMs, even have usually be better data sheets than the STMs. So that would be that. Uh, very in interesting crash, uh, interesting projects. Uh, could you Thanks. tell us something about uh, sensors that you used for drone or? Uh, of course. Uh, so for the drone, uh, there's only one sensor we use for now. That's the IMU, so the inertial measurement unit. Uh, besides that, uh, I made the whole rail down here, so you can uh, add different attachments like sensor boxes or cameras and things like that. Uh, the sensors on here are mostly just potentiometers for the position. As for the robot, uh, as for the rover, the main sensor. Oh yeah, I don't have the mics there. The main sensor that I have on the rover itself is the lidar on top. It's a 360-degree lidar that can that films all of the dots in a single plane. But because the head has two axes of freedom, my idea with this is to develop a 3D scanning method where. If you have an IMU inside and can scan all of the dots in a plane, if you do like, if you know the position based on the IMU and the scans, you can pretty much make a point cloud of the 3D surrounding. So that's the current sensors I'm using when it comes to these projects. Uh, I have one question. I learned something from you when you said people are today printing, 3D printing a lot, yeah. but you use it. No, not too much. Why and how? Can you, can you explain? Uh, I mean, I use it, uh, more, I use it uh, everywhere I can, but not uh, 
uh, not everywhere can everywhere I should. I try not to use it everywhere. For example, uh, these I also tried printing these legs, uh, these arms for the drone. For example, but there's no need for that. A plastic pipe is much cheaper, much stronger than any 3D print, and can also be bought for nothing pretty much when it comes to. And you don't have to wait for any print time. It's easier to replace and things like that. So while I do love 3D printing and using it in projects. I don't think it should be used for everything as people tend to print normal, bo just literal boxes, pipes and things like that because like these junction boxes, they can be bought at every, pretty much every electronic store and they do the job great. Unless you need, of course, some specific dimensions or something like that. Thank you, Milos. Thank you.